What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and today I want to speak to you about Esperanto Proverbs. Now, Proverbs is something that's always fascinated me, especially in Esperanto, because Esperanto, when Zamenhof created it, he had this idea of trying to keep it as logical as possible, as clear-cut as possible, while also allowing a lot of precision, so that's why it does have some forms of complexities here and there. But Proverbs is something that's always kind of, in my mind, gone against that, because Proverbs, by their very nature, are not clear-cut. You have to have an understanding of what they actually mean in full before you can actually even understand the proverb. Now, there is some proverbs which are very clear-cut, and it's just like, oh yeah, that's crystal clear, I know exactly what that means, but then there's others which make no sense at all unless you've originally, like I said, learned them previously. Now, for me, as an English speaker, these have always been quite difficult for me because I'm not very cultured as it is, and I don't know any of the European languages, and the Esperanto proverbs are naturally very European in their origin, the ones that Zamenhof used, and I guess that's why a lot of them have just died off. You gotta remember, when Zamenhof created, um, the, like he published the first book on proverbs in Esperanto. There was like over 2,000 proverbs and hardly any of them are used nowadays except for a few, like a very select few. And I use a couple of them here and there, but it's always been difficult because I can't, I've never found like a good translation of them. So I was never 100% sure about what they actually meant. I've asked other Esperantists in the past and some of them have gone, eh, I don't know what that means. Well, others have gone, well, isn't that obvious to you? It means blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I guess that's because you're a German or you're a, you know, you're an Italian or whatever, and that makes sense to you, but for me, that still does not make sense. But if that's what it means, cool, I'll go with that. And I've also kind of stayed clear of some proverbs because of their just ambiguity, and I don't want to make it too hard for you guys out there to understand me, but I've always wanted to um, in some way at least utilize them because they are and they this is one of the fascinating things when Zamenhof created them a, a fair few people actually said we don't need proverbs in Esperanto and he actually stood up and said no the reason we have proverbs is because they provide a cultural base to the language so that there is proof again that Zamenhof didn't just create a tool he wanted to create a community and he knew that proverbs is something which allows um, it gives like a kind of like a, a, a glue to the language. It gives like a, a kind of a, a, um, a little bit of a culture to it. You know what I mean? Like it's not just this highly logical tool with nothing to it. It's got like a little bit of history. So he kind of embedded that into it. And like I said, most of them have died out. But I finally, friggin' finally found a list of proverbs. Um, not a big list, but I found a good translation of them. And I wanted to share a few with you today because maybe this is something that you're interested in. I don't know. But recently... Well, not recently, actually about six months ago. See, I'm one of these people, I just love to buy books, okay? I love to buy books because I just like holding them and having them, and I feel cultured by putting them in a book cupboard, but uh, book cupboard, bookshelf. Um, but I don't get around to reading them all that too often. But I've been reading this one I brought ages back, and it's called Star in the Night Sky. Now, basically, this book here is just a translation of bits and pieces of, like, some of the most famous... Esperanto literature, or not necessarily the most famous, but some of them um, the best written, I guess. And it goes all the way from Zamenhof himself right up to modern times, and I found it fascinating. I've been slowly reading through it, and like some of the writing styles in here, it's just like, it's absolutely beautiful the way they write, and I'm like, damn man, I wish I could talk like that, not like some dirty street Esperantist, but anyway. There was this one page that caught my attention, and it's page 46. So get this book and jump to page 46, Star in the Night Sky. And this is what I wanted to share with you, because it's actually a um, extract from, uh, what's it called? It's called the um, La Proverbaro Esperanta, um, which was written by Zamenhof. And it it's got a list of probably the most well-known proverbs to an English speaker, but they're Esperanto translations. Now, they're not always obvious about what they mean. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of them here, which I think would be really awesome um, for us to use because it just simplifies things. Now, one you guys may have heard of, now this is what it means in English, is other countries, other customs. Now, I've heard that one a fair bit, I don't know about you guys, but in Esperanto, it actually directly translates as other homes, other people. So, alie domoi, alie homoi, that's other countries, other customs. Now, there's a, um, this one here, This I hear this a fair bit in Australia, I don't know about you guys, it is plain as a pike staff. Now, in Esperanto, that translates as as certain as twice two is four. And the actual 
Um, wording is, uh, let me just jump to it. Um, do, 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 do. Certe kiel duoble du kvar. Okay, so I thought that was pretty cool. Um, let's have a look. Ah, uh, yes. Now, there's this one which in English kind of goes in two different ways. There's, there are two sides to every question or every coin has two faces, okay? And in Esperanto it translates as Ciu medalo du flancoin posedas. And I also like the way they're kind of written. It's kind of like just flowing as well. So I like that. Now, let's have a look at this. This one, oh god, this one we use all the time. Um, there's no point crying over spilt milk. In Esperanto that translates as there's no taking pain for uh, trouble or tears. Now that makes like totally different to the English one, but let's hear what that sounds like in Esperanto. De plendo que ploro ne furijas doloro. How cool is that? De plendo que ploro ne furijas doloro. I like that. I've got to practice it though because it doesn't sound anything like the English one. Um, this one here, you'll see this a lot in movies where they go, no sooner said than done. And in Esperanto, this one translates beautifully, okay? Dirite farite. How cool is that? It's just two words, dirite farite. It's so much cooler than the English one. Let's have a look at some others we got here. Oh, this one here. To make a mountain out of a molehill. Now in Esperanto, this one actually translates as to make a fly out of an elephant. How cool is that? Fari el musho. Elephanton. Yeah, I can dig that. I can dig that. Now this is one I always use, and um, the Volapuka speakers here. You guys have probably heard this one too, if you've um, if you're learning Volapuk and you know Esperanto. In English, you say that's all Greek to me, okay? In Esperanto, you say that's all Volapuk to me. Now, for those who don't know what Volapuk is, it's a created language that was actually around before Esperanto, and it was growing massive. And then Esperanto came out, and then the Volapuk movement had internal issues, and then it just kind of collapsed, and all the Volapuk speakers actually came and started learning Esperanto. And this was back in like 1880, uh, 1890s, or something like that. So our version in Esperanto, when you want to say it's all Greek to me, you say it's all Volapuk to me. And the way you say that is you go, let me just find it. Uh, I've got my way of saying it, but there's an actual way that Zamenhof um, said it. Giestos por mi volupukajo. Okay, cool. Now, oh, this one here. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Okay, but in Esperanto, it's among wolves, howl as a wolf. That kind of makes sense. Inter lupoi, criu lupe. Okay, cool. I think I got that one down, Pat. Yeah, let's have a look what else we got. Oh yes, as you make your bed, so too must you lie in it. And in Esperanto that translates as, as the act, so the payment. I guess that kind of makes more logical sense than the English one. Kia argo, tia pago. Yep, I like it. I can dig that. Um, of course this one, united we stand, divided we fall. And in Esperanto it's consensus constructs, disagreement destroys. And that translates as consento construas mal pazzo dividas. Yep, that's, that sounds pretty Zamenhofian. Zamenhofian. I don't know if I just created a new word or if that's actually like a real word or if it can be a real word. Uh, oh yeah, a man is known by the company he keeps. And that is with whom you party, that's who you are. Yeah, that makes sense. Con quiu vi festas, tia vi estas. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, Hey, this one's interesting. Don't teach a fish to swim. I've never heard that one in English. Apparently it means literally uh, in Esperanto, teaching a professor is a task in vain. I guess it means don't try to teach someone who already knows about a certain skill set. So, lezioni al professoro estas vana laboro. Yeah, I don't know if I'd ever use that just because I don't use it in English. Oh, this one's awesome. I say this to my mates all the time. He has a screw loose, okay? That's the English one. But in Esperanto, and I was looking at this one earlier and I've started using it already, he's missing a valve in his head. <laughs> Sounds like some type of steampunk type of stuff. But here it is. Mancas clapo and lia capo. How cool is that? I love that one. Um, oh yeah, this one here. Two heads are better than one. More eyes, more certainty. 21. Plida oculi, plida tsaratezzo. Now for me, that one seems a little bit strange. I don't think I would use that one. Like not, not the actual proverb itself, but I would actually say you plead the oculi des plead the But I guess for some reason Zamenhof just wanted to use double plea, which is kind of weird because when you have two pleas, you kind of go you plea blah 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 des plea type of thing. I don't know, maybe there's a reason he went like that. Maybe there's a nuance I'm missing there, but I'll have a look into that one later. Um, what else we got here? 
Oh, this one here. These last two are good ones. Blood is thicker than water. In Esperanto, it is same race, same feeling. So that is summer gento, summer cento. I guess that's what it's talking about. But for me, when you say blood is thicker than water, it's talking about family. family. So I'd say um, sama familio, uh, sama cento. But I guess that's what gento is. It's just family on a bigger scale. You're talking about like uh, culturally wise, you know, your, your people of your country or whatever. But I guess that's what, how Zamenhof was thinking back then. He's thinking more on the like country size rather than like individual family. But this last one here, say it all the time in English. Birds of a feather flock together. And that is, this is pretty cool. A monkey likes a monkey better than anything. <laughs> simio al simio plachas pli ol chio. Yep, that is one I'm gonna use against Kai next time I see him. Anyway, I just wanted to share these random little proverbs with you. Definitely check this book out, Star in the Night Sky. It's freaking awesome. I've barely gotten through it, but I'm loving what I've found so far. It's really good because there's like a lot of good Esperanto literature out there and you'll read it. And you read it with like the way that you've learned the language, but then you look at this guy's translation. These translations are really good. And you're going through it and you're like, hey, yeah, man, that's a cool way of, tra of what that actually means. Like I thought of something else, same thing, but I can see how we can use these words now within like a sentence type of thing. It's it's really quite good. I like it. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you today. Also, I've got some highly traumatic news. I should have put this at the beginning because it's very important, probably more important than this. A button blew off of this shirt today when I put it on. I don't know if that means this shirt's been worn too much or if I'm just getting fat or bloody both. But anyway, I have to get down to sewing to get this baby back together. And I'm actually starting to fear that eventually this thing's going to start falling apart and I'm going to lose my like power of sand type of thing but yeah that's it if you've liked this video give it a like share it around with your friends and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video and if you're not there I'll find you and I'll use random proverbs against you <laughs>